how to install and run a modded Minecraft server. You guys wanted to know? Now you know. Hello everybody and welcome to OMG Craft, the show that'll make you a Minecraft expert in no time. I'm your host, OMG Chad. Last week we did an episode on how to run your own Minecraft server and a lot of people in the comments wanted to know how we could do this but with mods. Now there's a few different ways to run a modded server, some with Forge, some with a different program called Bucket or Spigot, you may have heard of that as well, but Bucket and Spigot have become a little bit more complicated because you have to compile the stuff yourself. And anyway, we're not gonna go into that. Forge is super awesome and a lot of the mods that are say found on the Curse Launcher or FTB are all Forge mods. So very, very powerful mods can be done with Forge. So let's learn how to set up your own Forge modded Minecraft server. So here we are. And the first thing that you have to do is learn what version of Forge your the mod pack that you're going to be wanting to use is running. And there's two ways to do this. One, here I'm going to go ahead and click play and then click play over here and let that load in the background. The first way is to look right here once you have all your profiles, click into a profile and then you see this Minecraft version 11 1.11 modded. Well, that Forge 13.19.1.2199, sorry, that's small on the screen, is your for Forge version. Alternatively, you can look over here at Minecraft when it opens it up, and you can see at the bottom we are running 13.19.1.2199. So there's a two ways you can tell what version of Forge you need to run, what version of Forge server you need to run. So once you've determined that, head on over to minecraftforge.net and you're going to be looking at the downloads. And there's a whole bunch of downloads right here, but you're gonna click this show all downloads button. And right here at the top, just because this is a recent build, is the version we need, 13.19.1.29.99, 2199, sorry but there's a whole bunch of other versions for you to look through. We're going to choose the installer-win because I'm on Windows. If you're on Mac, you can just do the installer and that'll work just fine. So go ahead and click that and it will download. It'll take you to a uh, an advertisement and it is finishing up its download now. And what you're gonna do is you're going to go ahead and click on it and it will open. And you do, you're do. you gonna ignore the client and choose the server. It's gonna tell you that you need to choose a different directory, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go into the .minecraft directory and make a new folder here. We're gonna call this server and choose that as our directory. This is an option just to send some of your data to uh, these guys so that they know how your computer is set up. You can select it or unselect it. It's really just for analytics. Go ahead and click OK and it's going to download in place all the files that you need on your computer. Okay, once you are finished, you'll see this message successfully downloaded Minecraft server, downloaded 18 libraries from Forge. Now you're going to open up uh, your browser and you're going to navigate to where that was downloaded and I know that it's in my .minecraft folder. Uh, you'll probably have to go to app data roaming.minecraft and I put it right here in this server folder. And you can see that there's not a lot in there. There's a few libraries over here, but we can ignore those. You'll see that there's two server jars and this is just like the other video we showed starting a Minecraft server, except this is the modded version. Instead of choosing this, which is basically the vanilla jar, uh, you're going to choose the modded jar and go ahead and double click that and it's going to try to run. It's going to create a few files for us here like logs and mods uh, and hopefully the EULA. There you go. EULA.txt. Uh, you are going to have to once again change this to true before and hit save and close that out before you can actually launch the server. Now you can go ahead and double click the modded version and it will open up that same interface that we saw on the vanilla server. 
And as you can see, it is running. It's creating some things right here. It looks like it's preparing the spawn area. That's finished. And you get a little graph of the resources that it is taking up. You can go ahead and stop the server and it will close just like that. Now you have all of these different files, but there's really only two folders that you need to worry about. First is the world folder, which is what the map is. So if you click in here, you can see your level.dat and region stuff uh, in there. And the second is the mods folder. Right now it is empty. So you're going to place the mods that are server side into this folder and they use the same jars as before. So if you run on over here into the curse launcher and I have this uh, OMG craft one, I can actually select open folder and it's going to open uh, the folder right here. Nope, that's this one. There you go. So you can see Minecraft instances OMG craft. This profile is named OMG craft. So here we go. Inside of this profile, like it, uh, well, I'm assuming that maybe you had a profile set up with some mods that you liked and you wanted to create a server so other people can play. Uh, well, that's what we're going to do. So we already have a profile that we like and we have some mods that we like inside of our mods folder. And so here, these two mods, we can just basically grab them, copy them, and then paste them into the mods folder in the server that we just made. Remember, this is app data roaming Minecraft server and then mods and then hit paste and there you go now you have those a lot of people though will want to do an extra step and copy over your config files as well because uh, these files will have all sorts of information they're what your configurations are um, when it comes to the mods that you are running if you're already running them on a client so you can take these and you can paste them. Uh, it's going to say overwrite all of them. There you go. And now we have both of those config files as well. So when we go ahead and run the server, let's head back on over to the library. So here we have the server running in the background. And we can go ahead and click multiplayer, add a server, and call this local host. There you go. Hit done. Refresh. There we go. We have it. We can log in. <laughs> Looks like I'm staring at a dirt wall. I'm going to hit E and get that achievement. And if we head over to the actual server, you can see if I drag this over that I have joined the game. I've earned an achievement. I can say hello in the server console. Oh, I need to do the say command, of course. Uh, and the server will say hello. I can also op OMG Chad. There you go. Now I've been op. Now over here I can change my game mode to one. And if I go into creative, you can see that I have mods installed. These are not normal in the game. Whoops. Place them over here, place them over here, place them over here. Nice. We are running a modified version of a server with all the mods that we want. Now, one more step is to make sure that this server is running with a little bit more RAM than is normally allocated because there isn't normally enough. So we're going to go ahead and stop this server. By the way, if you come over here and hit refresh, the server will no longer show up. You're going to go back over to where that server is located right here and you're going to create a new text file. Sorry that's going off the page but just a new text file. We're going to say server start dot bat is what we're going to call it and delete the dot txt at the end. This can be named anything. This is just for you to know. We're going to hit enter and it's going to say are you sure because we're about to create something that can be executed and you're going to say yes. You can right click and hit edit and then paste in the normal Java uh, minimums and maximums. This is this current uh, is going to add two gigabytes of RAM. And then this forge.jar needs to be the same name as what we are trying to start. So we're going to copy this. We're going to uh, 
uh, select this and paste overwriting what that is and no GUI will mean that it won't create that graph it won't create all that all it's going to give us is a command line interface which I'm okay with if you like that graph for whatever reason you can delete this out of here we're going to go ahead and save and close this then do server start that bat and you can see that it opened a command line instead of the crazy uh, graphics interface and it says that it's launching it looks really cool as it uh, goes through there and it looks like it is ready and it looks like it is running there we go we can join again you can see over here in the command line that I joined the game I can say hello actually I could even just hit up Hello world, and the server speaks to me. So that is how we run a modded Minecraft server on a PC. So two things before you leave this video. Uh, first is that the command for running more RAM is in the description below. And second is not all mods will work with the server version. You do have to pick and choose which mods you add into that server file. I kind of clicked all my mods and drag them over because I know that all those would be compatible with the server but some mods are only client based mods and if you try to run the server with those mods in the mod folder the server will crash so think of it this way is this some sort of mod that adds blocks and mechanics and things that the server would have to know about into the game well then that's a server side mod if it's something that the server wouldn't ever need to know about like shaders or textures or um, you know just various things that look different that doesn't really affect other players well that is a client side mod so uh, maybe more animations would be a client side mod not a server mod so you do have to pick and choose which mods. Uh, in the old version of FTB, you could download all of the server mods and run your own server that way in the FTB client, but that hasn't been built into the curse launcher yet. So hopefully that will be included in a future update. So there you have it. That's how you run a your own modded server. This can be useful for bringing your own friends on, or if you have another computer lying around, it's actually super helpful to run this on a different computer while you're recording so that all or, or streaming or whatever or just playing the game so it's a little bit more smoother because that computer that's running the server is doing a lot of computing power to generate land and to generate things and that won't be on your own game uh, or on your own computer which is already running the game which slows down the computer so there's a lot of advantages to running a modded server thanks so much for watching this video if you enjoyed it make sure you give it a like leave a comment down below let me know your thoughts make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified whenever i upload a video next and i'll see you next time on omg craft bye